This is a video on how to refract in a plus sill ferropter. So I have my patient here. Uh, I want to make sure that her pupils are behind the lens wells. So I look and see, I line them up, I make sure that these are out. This is for near testing, this is for the distance PD. I can adjust using this knob to adjust for PD. I want to get her these right in front of her eyes. This, if she has a bit of a head tilt, I can use this to orient properly so the lens wells are in front of her eyes. And then to uh, have a starting point here, I'll put into the foropter some starting point, my retinoscopy, my autorefract reading, or the measurement of her previous glasses. Uh, in this case, um, her previous glasses were a minus five plus 150 axis 180. So I put those in there. That is where I'm gonna start for the right eye. For the left eye, uh, her previous glasses were a minus 450 uh, sphere. So no astigmatism correction there. Um, so I enter that in and then I occlude one eye and I ask her, can you read the chart? What is the little so you can see out there for me? Oh, T-C-V-E-C-L. Well, she just read the 2020 row. Pretty happy about that, but maybe she's over minus. Uh, do you like it better? So I'm gonna check, I'm gonna take some minus away from her. Do you like it better with one or two? Hmm, two. That means her glasses were a little over minus. She wants less minus. Here, do you like it better two or three? two, three, mm, two. So she wants two, I'm gonna leave it on that. And now that I have the gross sphere power done, I'm gonna flip the JCC, Jackson Cross Sill, into place. Uh, you can see the arrows there that shows that we have the um, Fropter axis sill thing set at 180. When I put this in, if I align it so the rotation of the JCC, Jackson Cross Sill lens, is in line with the axis, I'm gonna be checking for axis orientation. If I rotate it so the P for power is lined up with the axis, when I flip this, I'll be checking for the power. So she already has a diopter and a half sill correction in there. So I'm gonna start with axis, and I'm gonna ask her, do you like it better with one or two? One, two, give her plenty of time to decide. Uh, and a nice rhythm so she knows if she can't make a decision right away, you're gonna ask her again. Uh, better one or two, two! So she likes two. With that amount of astigmatism, I'd rotate it maybe 15 degrees. Here, do you like better three or four? Three, three, three. She wants me to go that way. And see, I'm chasing the white, moving the axis in the direction of the white dot. That is what you do in a plus four opter. A minus four opter is the opposite. Uh, here, a little better one or two. One, two, one, one. So she's bringing me back this direction. I go back not quite as far as the previous where she drove me the other direction. Here, a little better. One, two, one, two. Mm, I don't know. So if she can't decide, that means it's the end point. Uh, and I flip over to power. Here, a little better. One or two. One, that means she wants a little more sickness correction. Here, do you like better one or two? One. one. So she wants more yet. So I have just put in two clicks of sill, which means I have to do the spherical equivalent. This is plus sill. I've got to add a quarter minus sphere to balance that out and to keep the image on her retina, the circle of least confusion on her retina. Um, so I've done my spherical equivalent. And here I ask, do you like better one? or two. One, two. Mm, one. One, she wants a little more sill. Here, do you like better three or four? Four. So she really doesn't want that. Five better or six? Mm. Five, six. Mm. She can't decide that means that's my end point, so I leave it right there. Uh, and if I want to, as a beginner, I might say, eh, can you still read that bottom row? Yeah, TZVCL. So she's still in the 2020. I didn't bungle anything there. So leave that eye alone. Done with the monocular portion there. Switch to the left eye. Open that before you occlude the right eye so you don't have both eyes occluded at the same time, which is very annoying for patients. And then here, what can you read? Read to me the littlest line that you can guess at. Wow, 
down. So she's kind of hit and miss on the 20, 30 row. Uh, so I want to know, does she need more minus or less to help her out there? Uh, remember, I started with her old glasses, so who knows how crummy they are. Uh, do you like better with one, two, one, two? Oh, I like one. Yeah, she doesn't want more minus. Here, a little better, three, four, four. Three. Three. She wants less minus. Here, a little better. One, four, two. One, two, two. Uh, what can you read there? Uh, a, P, E, R. She's kind of on the 20, 25 row. So eh, it's better than it was before. I'm going to check for sill. She has no astigmatism correction in her current glasses. So I'm going to add a little quarter diopter. And then I'm going to fish for sill in each of the main four quadrants. And if I get a nibble, I will um, explore it. And if I don't, I'll just go on to the next quadrant. So here, I usually start there. Uh, do you like better with one or two? One, one. So red dots and a plus barometer means eh, she doesn't want it. Here, next quadrant, do you like better one or two? One, one. Eh, red dots, get rid of it. Here, a little better, three, four, three, four, four. Oh, she wants a little sill there. I put two clicks in here, so I need to add my spherical equivalent over here. Do you like better here with one or two? One, one. She wants a little more white dots here, a little better. One, two, one, two, two. So she kicks that out. Uh, I can't remember. Did I already do axis? Darn it. Here, a little better. One, two, one. Oh, one! So I move it in the direction of the white dot. Here, a little bit better. One or two. One, two, two! Come back where we started, toward that, but not all the way. Here, a little better. One or two. One, one! And move it back there. Three or four. Three, four. So that's my endpoint on the axis. She can't decide. I know that I started a little bit further at the 180 and she's uh, put me at about 177. So I feel comfortable with that. And then after you refine the axis, you always end on power. It's power, axis, power. So here I'm gonna check the power again. Do you like better one or two? Two! Give her a little bit more. Better three or four? Three or four. She says, mm, red, kick it out. So that is the astigmatism correction there. Now, I can't remember if I did the axis twice or not because, you know, I'm doing a video, darn it. With a real patient, I would just go ahead and do it twice if I couldn't remember. Uh, they don't need to know that you didn't need to do it twice. Better to do it twice than not at all. Uh, then I ask her, what can you read? Oh, TCV ECL. And I got her to 2020, happy with that. Uh, now I open both eyes, make sure it looks good. Um, I am going to make sure I have the eyes on the same focal plane. She's 40 years old, she can accommodate. Uh, so I put in a plus fog, two diopters plus. If my starting point wasn't over minus, this should crumb up her vision. And I uh, isolate, in our lanes we isolate the 2050 row. And I ask her, what can you read without squinting? Can you see any of those? No. Anything there? No. What about there? Any guesses there? Oh, e, e, G, uh. What about there? E, G, N, N, O. So she's getting it on the 2050 row. So here I have her in a plus fog. I'm happy about that. I put in the prism, Risley prism. The this uh, arrow points to the base, which is not diagonal like that. It's base down. And this says that I have six base down for the right eye, which means the image looks up to her. And then for the left eye, I've got six base up. The image is going to be the lower. And then I ask her, look back and forth between those two images. Do you see double? You should see two blurry double images. Yes, I do. So looking back and forth between those two uh, images. And tell me, is it sharper on the top or the bottom? No, it's sharper. Ah, the bottom one's the left one. Uh, so I'm going to leave that alone, the clearer image, and I'm going to make the blurry one the sharper one by adding some minus. So uh, two clicks of minus there. Now, which is sharper, the top or the bottom? Oh, the top one. Well, that's what I expected. I go past my starting point 
Uh, and now, if she's consistent, I have just really blurred up the right eye. She should say the left eye is a sharper. So here is a sharper top or bottom. Oh, the bottom! So she's consistent. If I do three clicks here, I know she's going to say, oh, that top is sharper. So that's what I want. And I'm going to hone in on which of the two lenses in between is most equal for her. It's a hard question for her to answer, so I'm instead going to say, here, is it sharper top or bottom? She's not quite sure, so I'm going to go here, a little more blur to the top. Here is a sharper top or bottom. Mm, oh, the bottom! And here, a little more minus on that. Mm, oh. She's not sure, she can't tell the difference. That means that my end point of where they are equal. So I take out the prisms, and then I show her the entire chart, the uh, all the way down to the 2020, and I ask, can you guess at the bottom row? Blurry. That's what I want. If she could read the bottom row, I wouldn't have had her in a plus fog, and she could have been accommodating. Uh, here, tell me when you can first guess at that bottom row. Any guesses here? No squinting. Mm, no. What about here? Mm, no. Here. Teasy. Mm, Teasy. What about here? Teasy. Oh, F. So she got them pretty well, 2020. So that is my kind of most plus to 2020 and I give her three clicks for free if she wants some extra minus. Uh, so here I ask her, is it clearer or more comfortable with one or two? Mm, two. Sounds expected answer. Here, do you like better three or four? Four. And here, clearer or more comfortable, five or six? Mm. Five, a little better, or six? So if she takes six, then I'm going to just double check to make sure she won't take a little more plus. Here, do you like better seven or eight? Mmm, eight. So that's her end point. Let's verify she can still see. So now I show her the whole chart. I can show her the 2020 on the bottom or the 2015. What is the littlest line that you can read for me? Mmm, OHP NTZ. Beautiful 2015. Gotta like that. And then open the left, close the right, and here, of course, in real life, we have uh, charts that we change the letters all the time. Uh, here, what is the littlest you can guess at? Mm, OHP MTZ. So beautiful 2015, both eyes. She is happy. I now, since she's 40, I want to know if she's presbyopic a little bit. So I pull this down. I always stabilize the propter so I don't have it smack her in the face. And I pull this down. If I do that in real life here at the video, you won't be able to see what I'm doing. So I have pulled the reading card down. I have it at 16 inches, the standard two and a half diopter distance from her. And I ask her, showing her her current prescription, distance prescription. Uh, overall, do you like it better with one or two? Two is a plus one add. Better one, two. Mmm, two. She likes a little bit of an add. I want to know if she wants more. Do you like better here? One or two. One, which is a plus one add, or two, which is 150 add. Mmm, one. So she likes one. That's plus one add. And here, refine it a little bit more. Do you like better three? Four. Three. Four. Mmm, three. So she likes three. That's a plus one uh, 125 add over my distance prescription. So I make a note of that. Uh, and then and then I'm done. I take the foropter away. So what did we have here in the final prescription? I just gave her back her distance prescription. We have a minus 525 plus 2 axis 159 for the right eye. For the left eye, minus 4 plus 50 axis 176 with a plus 125 add.